In this demo, I'm going to create a new Azure AD web application registration using the Azure AD Admin Center, as well as a .NET Core console app to query Microsoft Graph. I'm going to issue a lot of requests in parallel to trigger these requests to be throttled. Uh, and this application is going to allow you to see the responses that you're going to receive. I'm going to start by launching the, the browser, navigating to the Azure AD Admin Center at aad.portal.azure.com. Now in the left-hand menu, I'm going to select the Azure AD um, icon, and then I'm going to choose from the Manage section, App Registrations. On the App Registration page, I'm going to select New Registration, and on the Register and Application page, I'm going to create a new Graph app. So it's going to be called the Graph Console app. And for the supported account types, I'm going to leave it set to the single tenant. And then I'm going to select Register. Now there's a few values that you see here on this overview page that you're going to want to keep track of uh, for your application that we're going to need later. So I'm going to launch uh, Visual Studio Code just to act as a little uh, notepad for myself. I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to copy the application ID And I'm going to save these three values, the application ID. I'm going to also grab the tenant ID. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to set up uh, a platform configuration. So I'm going to select authentication from the menu, and I'm going to add a platform. And because we're building a console app, I'm going to choose a mobile and desktop applications. And in the redirect URI section, I'm going to choose the native client, uh, and then select the configure button. Now, in addition, I'm going to scroll down a little bit farther and I'm going to select on for the public flows or the public public client flows. I'm going to select yes for uh, allowing uh, mobile and desktop flows. Um, this is going to allow us to use the resource owner password credential flow, which is just a very simplified way uh, for us to handle authentication as we want to focus on the actual Microsoft Graph piece to this and not so much uh, all the details around creating different, um, supporting different OAuth flows and different access options we have with Azure Active Directory. So then I'll go ahead and select save. The next step is to select the permissions that our application is going to need. So I'm going to select API permissions. Now let's go add a permission to our app that we're going to need to uh, access um, the user's mail. So I'm going to go to the API permissions page on the Azure AD app, and then I'm going to select add a permission. It's going to be a graph permission for delegated permissions. And I'm going to look for the permission mail.read. I'll go ahead and select that, and then select add permissions. And then I'm going to select the grant admin consent, followed by yes. Now, the option to grant admin consent here in the Azure AD Admin Center, uh, what that's doing is pre-consenting the permissions for all the users and the tenant, just to simplify this demo. Um, this approach allows the console app to use the resource owner password credential grant, so that the user isn't going to have to uh, be prompted to grant consent to the application. And that's just going to simplify the process of obtaining our OAuth access token, because I want to focus on the graph um, aspects of this and not so much on all the authentication options we have with Azure AD apps. We could elect to implement an alternative uh, authentication option, such as the device code flow, to utilize dynamic consent as another option. But I just chose to go this approach just to keep things simple. Now let's go create our .NET Core console app. So in the command prompt, I'm going to enter .NET new console dash O graph console app. And that's going to go about creating our new console application. Now, once the application has been created, I'm now going to go jump into the folder. And I need to install a few things uh, to ensure that our app is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, run .NET add package. So I'm going to add a couple new get packages. The first will be Microsoft.identity.client. That's going to be for the MSAL uh, library. Um, the next one is going to be the Microsoft.graph for the graph client. The next one will be an extension 
configuration. And then after that, we're going to do, after our configuration, we'll then do a file extensions configuration, as well as a JSON configuration as well. And so then we'll go ahead and launch the, go ahead and open up our project in VS Code. Now, if prompted uh, to add some required assets, I'm going to go ahead and select yes. That just adds in a few extra things into our project uh, that'll make it, uh, development a little bit easier. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add a new file here called appsettings.json in the root of my project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in these uh, two properties here for a tenant ID and an application ID. Now these are uh, used, uh, these are where we're going to define uh, some information from our Azure AD app. So I need to go find that Azure AD app that we had. And we had saved those, that information to a, de a text file on the desktop. So I'm going to grab the application ID and the tenant. And I'll put both of those here inside of our app. Now there's a few helpers uh, that I'm going to need to create here, a couple helper classes. So I'm going to create a new folder here called helpers. And within this, I'm going to add a new file here called the auth helper.cs. And I'll paste that in. What this auth helper is going to do is it's defining a uh, send async method that's going to allow us to um, submit a uh, uh, authenticated request asynchronously uh, that's passed in. The next thing I'm going to need to do is we're going to create another helper here. This one is going to be the MSAL authentication provider.cs, and we'll paste that in as well. So this one's job uh, is going to, we have a, it's set up as a singleton, which is why we have a, sync, uh, a get instance. This is going to authenticate a request, and it's going to also obtain an access token. So we're going to use this access token, um, and we're going to add that to all of the HTTP requests that we're going to be submitting uh, with this app. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to incorporate Microsoft Graph into this app. So inside of the program uh, f file here, I'm going to add a few other uh, using statements to the top here. So we got uh, things for working with collections, working with um, .NET requests uh, or uh, HTTP requests, uh, some information about working with asynchronous tasks, the MSAL library, the uh, Microsoft Graph library, and a reference for all of our helpers. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in a little bit of code here. So the first thing I'm going to add is a file here that's going to load the settings uh, for our app. I'm going to put it just outside the class and just inside the class. There we go. So now it's loading our settings and it's going to verify that the application ID and the tenant ID are both specified. Um, I'm also going to add in another method. I'm going to add in this method for the create authorization provider that's going to create an instance um, of the client that I'm going to be, use to make a call to Microsoft Graph. And you notice here that it's got my mail.read permission uh, listed as well. I'm going to add yet another method just after this one. Um, this method here for getting the authenticated HTTP client is going to create an instance of the HTTP client, but it's also going to already have the authentication set up, so it's going to, by default, include the um, access token uh, in the request. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in a couple of methods to obtain the user's uh, login information. So I'm going to add in the re a read password. What that's going to do is prompt the user to um, type their password into the console. I'm going to read it in as a secure string and then write out uh, a bunch of stars so that people don't see the password when they're typing it in. And then I'm also going to add a method here for obtaining the current user's username as well. Now, we can start coding up our project. So within the main method, I'll scroll up to the main method. Here in the main method, I'm going to update the code to go get the values from our uh, settings file. Next, I need to prompt the user to authenticate. So the next thing we'll do is we'll add in two methods, one, for, uh, one call for getting the username and one for getting the password. And I'm going to generate an authenticated HTTP client uh, for submitting our requests. Now is when we want to start doing the real work. So at the end of this method, I'm going to paste in a bunch of code. So let me explain what this does. 
This code is going to create a bunch of requests. So we have a collection of 100 different requests that we're going to create, and they're all going to be going to a specific Microsoft Graph endpoint. This is the endpoint we're going to uh, right here. Now, when the task succeeds, it's going to write a dot to the console, where failed requests will write an X to the console. And the most recent failed request status is status code, and all the headers are going to be saved as well. All the tasks are then going to be executed in parallel, and at the conclusion of the request, the results will be written to the console. Now, the reason I'm not using the Microsoft Graph here, and I'm instead I'm using is the standard HTTP client, is because the Microsoft Graph.NET SDK includes some stuff to handle when requests are being throttled. So it knows how to queue those requests up and to delay uh, resubmission of those requests uh, according to the response that it gets back from Microsoft Graph. But in this case here, I'm trying to demonstrate what the throttling looks like. So I'm using just the raw client, and I don't want to get that extra help that Microsoft Graph is going to provide me. So let's go ahead and test our project out. I'm going to start by running .NET dev certs HTTPS trust. And that just is going to ensure that I have the developer certificates trusted on my machine. I have to enter in the password for my local machine, and we can see that I've already done that. The next step is to do a .NET build followed by a .NET run command. Now the console app may take a minute or two to complete the process of authenticating uh, and obtaining an access token, um, but here is where we're going to actually do the work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the username and then I'm going to copy my password and paste that in as well. And when I run this, we're going to see a bunch of stuff show up at the console. So what we should see after we entered in the username and the password, we should see a bunch of results that are going to be written to the console. There's a mix of success and failure indicators that are going to show up. So after all the results have been posted, the console has two lines that begin with a failed response. Um, notice that the code start, uh, states that too many requests uh, had happened. You can see that right about here. That's the representation of the HTTP status code uh, 429 that we received. So this status code is the indication that a lot of our requests are being throttled. And you can see that from all of those X's that are showing up in the list of results. So very few dots, which are successes, and a lot of X's, which are failures. Also notice that within the collection of the response headers that we see here in these response headers that we're getting back. Also notice that within the collection of all of these different response headers that we're getting, that there's one called retry after. This header is the value in seconds that the Microsoft Graph tells you to wait before sending your next request to avoid from being further throttled. In this demo, I created a .NET uh, console app and an Azure AD app that retrieved user information from Microsoft Graph. This query was submitted multiple times to demonstrate that Microsoft Graph is throttling the requests that we're getting back.